All right, so we continue on through respiration, and we've come to kind of a crossroads here. Um, recall we've gone through glycolysis. We know that um, glucose has been split uh, from a six-carbon molecule now into two three-carbon pyruvates. So we've gone through stage one. We've created a couple ATP. We've, we've reduced NAD to create NADH to carry energy to the electron transport chain in stage one, and we have pyruvate. Now, what do we do if there isn't oxygen? Remember, if we're in oxygen debt um, as eukaryotes, or if we're prokaryotic and we don't have a mitochondrion, we're going to go through anaerobic respiration, or we're going to go through fermentation and create ethanol and carbon dioxide, or we're going to create lactic acid in our muscle cells um, in oxygen debt. If we are under aerobic conditions, in other words, if there's oxygen present, we're going to go the other way. And we're going to, going to continue with aerobic respiration. We're going to continue breaking down what was originally that glucose, continue breaking down this pyruvate, um, rearranging carbons, ripping hydrogens off, uh, reducing more coenzymes, creating more ATP, and generally just becoming more efficient and creating more energy altogether. Okay, so we're going to continue down this road. We're going to look at what happens if there's oxygen present and if this pyruvate's able to continue on and enter this particular organelle, the, the mitochondria. So recall glycolysis happens out here in the cytoplasm, on the cytosol. And if there's oxygen present, that pyruvate's going to make its way into this, uh, this mitochondrion. It's going to go into the very inner part of the mitochondrion, the matrix. This is where this acetyl-CoA step happens. Um, it's where the, it, sometimes you'll see it called the transition reaction or the preparatory reaction. But this acetyl-CoA step occurs in the matrix. Um, and as I said, pyruvate is going to make its way in here. So this is where we are spatially. Um, this is a micrograph of uh, a mitochondria, and this is the matrix on the inside. All right, just so you know where we're at. Recall, pyruvate was made out here in the cytosol by glycolysis. Here it comes in. Now we're in the matrix. As we enter in, it's going to be decarboxylated. In other words, it's going to lose a carbon. Okay, and it's also going to lose a couple oxygen. So CO2 is released. We know that when we exhale, you've always known this, um, that when you exhale, you exhale CO2. Okay, well, this is the, this is the source of that CO2. All right, it's going to be decarboxylated. It's going to be ripped off uh, of the pyruvate, uh, essentially as a waste product. And now we have an acetyl group. We have a two-carbon molecule. When we rip this carbon dioxide off, energy is created, energy is released, and we use that energy to reduce NAD, reduce this coenzyme, to make NADH, and we know NADH then carries energy to the electron transport chain, because um, that's our, our, the big dog in this situation. That it's it's going to make the most of our ATP. So now we have an acetyl group. We've, we're continuing to rip hydrogens off of it. We're continuing to destabilize it. Um, and speaking of destabilization, a coenzyme A is also going to be added to it. And coenzymes, when you add them to molecules, they make them extremely um, unstable. So we have this acetyl group, these, these red carbons, which were originally from the glucose. We're continuing to metabolize that, that original glucose. Um, we're down to two carbons, but recall this happens twice, okay? Um, two pyruvates from one glucose, so this is going to happen twice. So we have two of these acetyl-CoA's. So essentially we have lost a third of the carbons that we originally had as a waste product, but we still have two-thirds of them left. We still have four um, in the form of two acetyl-CoA's that are unstable, and we need to continue to break this down. And it's going to continue on to the next step, which is the Krebs cycle. All right. We're going to tackle this entire thing uh, in the next screencast. But if you see up here, this is where acetyl-CoA is going to enter in. Uh, it's going to react with this oxaloacetate and continue through this Krebs cycle. All right, and power this. We're going to make some more ATP. We're going to continue with some reduction reactions, some redox reactions. Um, 
And we're going to continue with the ultimate goal of supplying energy to that electron transport chain and to make a bounty of ATP from the original glucose.